Hi friends! Chinese online shopping and delivery services very often surprise us. Here is a conventional resistor of 4 ohms, supposedly 100 watts. I ordered it half a year ago, but it came only now. I took several such resistors to build a stand for measuring the real output power of audio amplifiers. This load is equivalent to conventional dynamic heads with a resistance of 4 ohm. Such resistor can dissipate declared 100 watts of power, but only for a few seconds. Therefore, when I will build the stand, the resistors will be installed on the radiators and there will be an additional fan blowing. But for today's video, it will be ok without anything else. Today we will measure the output power of the amplifier. For experiments, I will use a Chinese D-Class amplifier board based on the TPA3118 chip. I bought a model on AliExpress for $2. A link can be found in the description. It is a compact but powerful amplifier with fairly good characteristics. On the basis of this amplifier, I collected several subwoofers. This compact size of the PCB will allow insert it into any loudspeaker. By the way about printed boards, if you are tired of homemade board development technologies, you can always order factory boards directly from the manufacturer. The company GLC is one of the largest in China and is specialized in the production of printed circuit boards of any complexity. Just download the file with the archive on the company website, select the options and that's all. The price of the boards starts from $2 for 10 pieces, and those who are interested to see the production process of these boards can look at my video on this topic. All the links are in the description. Here are amplifier parameters. In this case, we are to look only to power capacity. There are several variations of this amplifier. My sample of the amplifier is monophonic. There is also a two channel version with an output power of 30 watts per channel. My sample is one channel bridge about 50 to 60 watts. The seller indicates that the board could be fed from source up to 24 volts, but the power capacitors on the board are rated for 25 volts. The reserve is only 1 volt, and this is not good, but today we will torture this amplifier, so we will apply 24 volts. I must say that according to datasheet, to the chip can be fed up to 26 volts. It turns out that the manufacturer is greedy and puts the capacitors which sometime necessarily will burst. If there would be capacitors for 35 volts, there would not be any questions. For measurements, we need some equipment. First, it is a power supply, in my case, a laboratory power supply. Second, a functional frequency generator with the ability to adjust the frequency and amplitude, but not necessarily looking like mine. Now there are quite good programs and applications that will cope with our tasks. Third, we need a multimeter that will measure the voltage on the load. Fourth, an oscilloscope that will allow visual control of the waveform on the load. And of course we need a load itself. I will make short-term measurements, therefore I will not be cooling the resistor with fan, put on additional radiator or immerse it in water. I hope that it will withstand. Now about the experiment itself. To the output of the amplifier will be connected a load of 4 ohm. A multimeter will be connected to the load in the AC voltage measurement mode, since at the amplifier output the signal will be of sinusoidal form. Also, in parallel to the load and therefore to the multimeter, an oscilloscope will be connected, which will show the shape distortion of the output sign. A signal of a sinusoidal form with a frequency of 1 kHz will be applied to the input of the amplifier from the laboratory generator. To the amplifier will feed a voltage of 24 volts from the laboratory power supply. This is close to the limiting supply voltage for the amp on this chip. Next, we will increase the amplitude or the volume of the input signal until we get the so-called clipping on the oscilloscope screen. This will mean that there is no point in increasing the amplitude anymore since distortions have appeared. 
Then we fix the maximum value of the alternating voltage on the load that the multimeter will show. And we will calculate the output power by the following formula, where U is the effective value of the alternating voltage on the load and R is the resistance of this load. In addition, I connected the temperature sensor to the resistor, just to understand how quickly it heats up. In our measurement, the thermometer doesn't play any other role. We begin the measurement and watch the oscilloscope and the multimeter. We raise the amplitude of the signal and stop when notice a clipping. Clipping appeared at 15.5 volts at the output and the amplitude of this input signal was 1.3 volts. Having made a second measurement for more accurate results, it became clear that up to a voltage of 14.5 volts, the signal at the output was clean. As a result, using this formula, we got an output power of about 53 watts. If we take into account all the losses and the fact that we applied only 24 volts to the board, but according to the datasheet it is allowed up to 26 volts, I think 60 watts is quite capable to obtain. Also, we will take into account that the chip itself hadn't cooling, so class D still shows itself. Of course, for a long time in this mode, the chip will not withstand. It hits very strongly. The test took about a minute. The load resistor for that time was heated to 150 degrees, but this was expected. That's all in this video. If you find it interesting, please rate and share it with your friends. If you have any additional questions, ask them in our social groups. Links are in the description. Now, I have to say goodbye. Until new meetings, with you was Kasyan TV.